this conversation, we're going to be talking about thermochemistry and what thermochemistry is. So, thermo stands for what? Heat, exactly. Chemistry stands for what? Well, most people think about chemical reactions. So when you put thermochemistry together, we're going to be talking about the heat of reactions throughout this topic. So the first question we get to is what is energy? Well, energy is defined as the capacity to do work or to produce heat. And so when we talk about work, when we talk about the a, a car's engine as it as it operates, it turns the wheels which makes you move forward. Now in turn, the car also produces heat. So a car is a good definition of energy and motion and producing heat as a product so this picture is also another great illustration of energy because where do we get most of our energy from we get most of our energy from the Sun which releases it and then it hits earth and that's what keeps us around and surviving so now there are two types of energy there is potential energy and there's also kinetic energy. What's the difference between potential energy and kinetic energy? Potential energy is the energy that is stored. So examples include gasoline, water behind a dam, and food. Kinetic energy is energy that is in motion. Examples being balls bouncing, cars driving down the road, people playing basketball, Kinetic energy can also be calculated by this equation here. Kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared, where m is the mass in kilograms, and v is velocity in units of meters per second. So as we move forward, we have to talk about thermochemistry and the and thermodynamics and the laws of thermodynamics specifically here we're going to look at the first law there are actually three laws of thermodynamics but in this section we're only going to focus on the first law of thermodynamics now the first law is the law of conservation of energy and that states that energy is neither created nor destroyed so no matter, no matter how much energy you put into something the same amount of energy is going to come out. You can't create and you can't destroy energy, just like the law of conservation of mass. You can't, you can't change it. It's always going to be a constant, no matter where you are in the universe. So energy is constant throughout the universe. So as we continue talking about energy, just think about this. We've, we're going to be talking about thermochemistry in this case here we're going to be looking at thermal energy so what is thermal energy thermal energy is best represented as heat we know that heat is able to transfer from one substance to another campfire perfect example you're in the middle of winter it's 20 degrees fahrenheit outside you're cold what do you do you build a fire you stand next to the fire you heat up as it cools down you're heating up, you're absorbing that energy, so the heat's transferring from it to you. So during a chemical reaction, heat can be expressed as either absorbed or released. So what is the difference between heat and temperature? When we think about heat and temperature, we oftentimes think about them being one of the same, but there is a difference between heat and temperature. Heat is the transfer of energy from one substance to another. We saw that in the definition, the first bullet point on the slide. But what exactly is temperature? Now, when we talk about temperature, we say, okay, uh, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. But you know, that's when we measure temperature. But what is temperature specifically? Temperature is the measure of the random motions of molecules. So when we talk about that in relation to you know, the actual temperature that you might measure, if you talk, if we take water for example, and we put water 
in a pot and set it on the burner and leave it on high for a few minutes, what do you see happening to the water? You see it bubbling. Well, as the temperature gets higher, the motions of the molecules increase. And so you see the water molecules moving more rapidly. So temperature is just a measure of the random motions of molecules. So if you talk about something being cold, well, you know it's cold because it's not moving, it's not bubbling. You don't stick your hand in water that's bubbling because the most likely it's gonna be hot and you're gonna burn yourself. You could stick your hand in cold water. You could stick your hand in ice cold water. I don't know how long you wanna leave it there because it eventually it's gonna hurt. Either way, temperature is just a measure of the random motions of molecules. The, the colder temperatures usually mean the molecules will move really slow. If it gets too cold, the molecules are going to eventually freeze into a solid phase. If the temperature is really high, then it's going to it's going to be moving really fast, and eventually the liquid will turn into a gas. Now, as we talk about heat, more specifically, heat can flow in or out of a system. Heat is represented by the symbol Q. And you can see this here on the slide, Q. All right, Q is the universal symbol for heat, so make sure that that's something that you remember. Now, we talked about energy traveling in or out, and so there's a couple terms that we're gonna look at here, and I'm gonna underline the first one here. Endothermic. Endothermic represents a process where a system absorbs heat. Exothermic represents a, a process where a system loses heat. So when we talk about the system, you have the system which is found in the middle here, and you have the surroundings which is on the outside of the system. So everything else is surroundings. So heat is either going to travel in or out of a system. So if the heat travels out of a system, we're going to consider that to be exothermic. And if heat travels into the system, we're going to consider that to be endothermic. So when we talk about a car engine, all right, so we, we know that car engines get hot. So does that mean that the car's engine is going to be absorbing heat or does that mean it's going to be releasing heat? Well, if you say releasing heat, you're, you're right and you're correct so that means that a car's engine is going to be considered to be exothermic for that reason so as we start to talk about internal energy internal energy is based off of two things it's based off of heat and work and so the, the, there's a specific equation that we use to represent internal energy. That is delta E is equal to Q plus W. Q is the amount of energy lost or gained in the form of heat. We just talked about Q in the previous slide, whether you're you know, endothermic or exothermic. Now, endothermic has a specific sign that you assign to it, and this is for Q specifically. So it would be a positive value. Exo, since it's releasing, is gonna have a negative value for Q. So that's another detail that's important here is you have to understand the sign convention in relation to endothermic and exothermic processes. Endothermic is positive, exothermic is negative. All right, now what do we talk about W? Well, W is the amount of work lost or gained throughout the system. W is determined by this equation here, negative P delta V. So delta V is the, the change in volume, V final minus V initial. So you have to know the volume to begin with. And it also represents P, which stands for pressure. Notice 
this here, this this sign here. This is a negative sign, so it's going to alter the sign of whatever happens to the volume in that container. So you can calculate work if you know the pressure and the change in volume. So good example for this would be a piston inside of an engine. All right, so the piston inside of an engine is set up in this manner here. All right, the volume is going to be the space that's above all the way to the top of, of this cylinder here. So now if we're able to measure this, which we, we can say, let's say, for example, that this, this volume here was equal to, I want to say, 5 milliliters. All right, and then this volume here, you can see that the volume is quite a bit more. Let's say this volume was 25 milliliters. All right, so so this is V final, and this is V initial. So if we want to calculate the volume for this, we would do 25 minus 5 milliliters, which would be 20 milliliters. So if we know the pressure, we could actually calculate the work for this piston changing its, its, its volume here. And so let's say the pressure was one atmosphere, all right? So the pressure was one atmosphere, and we want to solve for the work. So work is equal to minus one times 20. That's going to be equal to negative 20 atmospheres times milliliters. So the, the work in this case here is negative. What does that mean? That means that work is being done on the surroundings. All right, so we can talk about the surroundings of the system in the same manner with, with W as we can talk about with Q. So in this case, W is negative. That means work is being done on the surroundings. All right. So if we consider this reaction here, sodium reacting with oxygen gas to perform sodium oxide, as the reaction takes place, the system loses 1,150 joules of heat to the surroundings, and the surroundings do 420 joules of work on the system. What is the change in internal energy? All right, so first of all here, the system loses this much heat. So Q is going to be equal to negative 1150 joules, and then the surroundings do 420 joules of work on the system, so W is going to be positive 420 joules. So we're plugging into the delta E equation, and what we get here is negative 730 joules. So what's that mean? That means that the system has lost 730 joules of, inter of internal energy. So that's how much energy is being spent on this process. So it's like you're taking money from the, the bank, and that's what that picture was on the previous slide here. So internal energy is representing the money that's inside of the bank. If you take away money from the bank, well, you lose internal energy. But if you have a positive delta E, then you're gaining internal energy, so you're adding cash to the to the vault. So in this case, did the system lose or gain internal energy? The negative sign tells us that it's losing internal energy. So when heat is added to a system, work is done on a system, its internal energy increases and vice versa. So last here, state function. What is a state function? State function depends only on its present state and not how it arrived there. What's that mean? For example, Gabriel, go get me 50 milliliters of water from the lab. Thanks. So Gabriel goes, gets me 50 milliliters of water from the lab, brings it back to me and says, thank you so much. Did I ask Gabriel how he got the water? No. All I asked him to do was get me 50 milliliters of water. So that's kind of an example of a state function. It doesn't matter how it gets there. All that matters is that I get my 50 milliliters of water. So you go, to, you go and want to measure out 25 milliliters or 20 grams of substance. It doesn't matter how you do it, it just matters that you do it. A state function just matters where you are initially in, in the final part. And the final part is measuring the 50 mils of the water here. So state functions include pressure, volume, 
mass, temperature, enthalpy, and entropy. Now, enthalpy we're going to talk about in just a few minutes. Entropy is a term that we get into with the second law of thermodynamics. We're not going to talk about that today. So, example here. A to B is a straight line. Or you can do this zigzag line, but you still end up with B. It doesn't matter the path you take. The point is, the state function is, B is the ending point, and B is going to be the same either way you take whichever path. Have any questions? Leave a comment.